Welcome to the Keith B. Dixon Zone. Dropping photography knowledge all day long. Right? Right? Welcome back to another podcast broadcast. My name is Keith B. Dixon. Today, we're going to be talking about print on site. Yes, POS. You might know it as POS, the acronym, POS print on site. Uh, Printing photos on site. We're going to talk about that today. That's actually my specialty. I've been doing it for years now. And we're going to dive right into exactly how it works and how it works effectively. I'm going to share some of my experiences about print on site and some of the things you you should be concerned with. I've got a laundry list here of just very important items that you should know about if you're planning on doing this so let's go so um you're a brand new photographer you're looking for a way to increase your revenues print on site is definitely a great option and you can use it in a number of ways so let me first describe what print on site is essentially a client comes to you and they're having an event and they want pictures off the backdrop kind of like a photo booth i hate to say that kind of like a photo booth but most people can relate to a photo booth you stand there you you snap the picture and you get it instantly um that's pretty much what it is and it's uh the paper is it's a unique type of paper it dries when it comes off it's it has a thermal head so it's not like your inkjet or a laser printer it uses thermal technology and you can handle it right off the printer and slide it into a folder. And I'm going to talk about the image presentation towards the end. So that's what print on site pretty much looks like. Now, um, as you guys know, there's a lot of photo booths out there. I don't do any photo booths. I had thought about it when they first came out. They were very archaic in a sense. It was just uh, a rig, so to speak, with a camera. And then they started getting um, innovative with them and making mirrors and uh, that, that was probably one of the more elaborate ones I saw last year at WPPI. They had a big mirror. You stand there and it snaps your picture. Um, I've seen all different types. They have actual photo booths and um, the laundry list goes on. I don't do any of those. So I'm not even going to be talking about that today. I'm going to be talking about kind of like the brick and mortar, like the hardcore backdrop photo. Some people even refer to it as uh, prom pictures, right? Um, by the way, if you're, a photo- if you're a photographer and you photograph proms, you're probably making a ton of money. So um, all those prom photographers are probably laughing all the way to the bank. That's the way to go. Volume print on site is the way to go. Now, it breaks down into two classifications. The first one is uh, speculative. And most photographers will, set, will start out uh, on a speculative job that means you you, hopefully you can charge some type of setup fee you go out there and with the hope of selling some images and making some money back now i'm going to tell you that's the hustle that's the grind that's how i got started in this game i didn't own any equipment i would just find the jobs and i would contract them out to uh, one of the guys on my crew uh still on the crew to this day um and that's how we would get it done so Um, I'd mostly be shooting off the backdrop and he'd be handling the printing. It was golden. I loved it. And matter of fact, I got hooked because we would go to an event. um, He'd charge a setup fee. It ranged from $150 to $200. It just kind of depends on your client. Enough to cover the paper is ideal. So whatever your paper cost is, you want to cover that if you can. Um, And then folders, again, I'll get into that towards the end. Uh, in terms of image pre- presentation, some of the options you can use that are that are cost effective, but um, we would make upwards of a thousand dollars sometimes in a night, and then we just split the money. So that's one way of thinking about it. Now there were cases where we didn't make that much money at all. Um, sometimes barely making three hundred dollars. That's the name of the game, and. It, it works kind of like a teeter totter, you know. Sometimes you make a lot of money, sometimes you don't, and it's just, it just comes with the territory. For us, it was about getting that job, and if they were doing this on a regular basis, that's what it was about. We knew that we could count on that revenue, whether it was five hundred dollars for the night, and we were splitting five hundred and five hundred, um, or it was uh, fifteen hundred. We knew that we were going to get that money for that day. And typically, most events are about four hours. So you figure $250 to work four hours, not too shabby when you're just standing there pushing the button. Now, 
full disclosure, I don't do a lot of speculation. I don't do any speculation jobs now. They're, everything is pretty much prepaid. And um, that's how I roll now. But it took me, uh, honestly, about 10 years to get to that point. It was 10 years of just, you know, setting up in the, the back room club, um, setting up, uh, you know, at a community center, doing a retirement party. It, it, it just became part of the game. And as people, as we did these consumer events for people, retirement parties, birthday parties, um, you name it, type of parties we were doing them, people that work for companies would say, hey, my company lo would love to have a feature like this. And that's what kind of broke it open for, for me. Um, the second part, which I think is really important, is the prepaid. Those are tough to get because you have to have a reputation for doing print on site. And... I'm not going to say it's going to be easy because it is the, one of the things that you will run into is bottlenecking. And I'm going to dive into that in just a quick second. Um, bottlenecking. Uh, so you're, you're doing a print run, something goes wrong, and next thing you know, you're behind the eight ball, and, and the photos never stop, but the printers do. Um, all kind of things happen. So full disclosure before I go any further, I am a DMP ambassador. DMP, DMP supports me. And I want to make that perfectly clear, but I am going to talk about other printers, not necessarily brand other brands, but I'm going to talk about my experience with other printers and why I use DMP. So I want you to know that going into it. All right. So um, as far as the best printers go, because there's a lot on the market and um, you guys I, on the West Coast, I'm on the West Coast here. On the West Coast, I work with a company called Photo Club, Photo Club Inc. And, and I've been with Photo Club Inc. for years, as long as I've been doing print on site. And uh, my man Ruben there, give him a call. I got I to gotta do a shameless plug for Ruben. Um, give him a call. It's, it's an experience that he will take care of you. And that's uh, important in print on site because um, you got to have nerves of steel, number one, because um, there's always this thing with supply and demand on media, buying folders and you got to have people that you can totally rely on and that's why um, I rock with Ruben he's on the uh, west coast and um, if I need to get something you know he's down in LA it's it's a hop skip and a jump on anything that's being shipped so that's my strategy for dealing with print on site and getting material as far as printers go um, I've used them all if you you can name a printer I've probably used it and um, second, there's a secondary printer, secondary printer Mitsubishi. Um, I started on Mitsubishi. I said I wasn't going to say the name, but um, I'm going to throw that out there just so you guys know, you know, what the close second is. So you don't make the mistake and go beyond that. Um, Mitsubishi, good, good printer, reliable. Um, but what I found with clients and clients looking at the image uh, side by side, and I've actually ran both printers side by side. People tend to gravitate towards the DMP print because it just pops on color. And I got to tell you that your lighting is a major factor, and that's coming up. That's going to be one of my points. I'm going to talk about your lighting. But the DMP printer is it, it's just it's unforgiving if you make a mistake. So if you're not good with your lighting, um, if you're not good with your color correction and, and doing that in, in the computer, uh, what you see is what you get it's it's that good and um one of the things that i did before i made the switch was i actually printed some images on both printers and then laid it out for the client and say hey which one looks better to you and i did it a bunch of times at one of my events and um overwhelmingly people went for the dmp print and um granted i started on mitsubishi so it's just a a greater printer and it, i'm gonna say that's quasi it's it's quasi um, Mitsubishi makes a good printer, but um, DMP just makes a better printer, and I want you guys to, to really understand that. The uh, DS620 is what I use, and um, there are other lesser brands out there for, for lower cost money. I'm going to tell you, don't waste your time with you. Be better off saving your money and getting the best. And if you can't wait, it's really just it's really tough for you. Um, call up Ruben and say hey do you have um, some demo models for sale and try to try to get one that way but I would buy the best DMP printer and they make a bunch of them 
I'm going to talk about the DS620. That's what I use. I would buy the DS620 and, and call it a day if you're going to get into this and get into this proper. So, um, again, full disclosure, I am a DMP ambassador and uh, DMP, DMP supports me. But as I, um, talk, if I, as I talk about these printers, I'm going to be perfectly transparent and really clear about what this means. Uh, if you, let's say, uh, I, matter of fact, um, Mitsubishi runs pretty close to, um, pretty close to DMP in terms of pricing. Uh, they make a, a good machine. If you have to, let's say DMP is, is not in your budget, definitely, um, go for the second best option. And I don't like second best. But if you have to, I'm going to tell you to do that. And that's just my transparency and my honesty. So um, DMP has a lot of features. They keep up on the technology. They're one of the, the oldest companies. And from what I've heard, that DMP makes a lot of the insides for a lot of other printers. So um, you may be using the inside of a DMP printer. It's not going to be exactly to the tune of, you know, a 620 or any of their 800 series or whatever um but they just make a great quality printer and they're very reliable so i want you to know that going into it so let me give you some background on print on site uh i think from a volume standpoint it is one of the greatest revenue generators that you could possibly do but on the flip side it is one of those types of uh, services that you can offer that will make your business look really bad if you do it wrong. And if, you, if you're if you scared, I'm going to tell you, you should be, because that means you should take every precaution that you, you can to make sure that everything goes correctly. I've been... Um, I've been through a lot of situations, even as an experienced uh, print-on-site operator, um, th things still happen. Uh, it's just it's just a way of the beast and um just recently i'm going to share a story with you just recently i was working for one of uh I was, i'm actually a, working as a sub for one of the largest largest clients that i serve through another photographer and um f for the life of me uh i, I decided i was going to bring the backup because sometimes i don't you know i don't bring a backup the, the dmp is pretty reliable and um, with any printer, you can catch what's called, we call them slang, uh, printer slugs. They can be very difficult to get out sometimes. And um, I know all the little tricks, you know, to making it happen. The thing is, when you're on a live job doing a POS and you're trying to knock a slug out of the roller, time is ticking because the photos never stop. And uh, we call that going into the weeds. So um, let's say you've shot 30 minutes worth of photos. That could be 20 images times two. So you've got 40 images on your first run and uh, you've got to pick the right one. Some photographers take three, but we usually do two to make sure that the person's eyes are open. So that first run, you're getting 40 in. You got to run through those um, on the computer. Uh, tighten them up, whatever you got to do. And look, folks, let me deviate right now. Do not edit on the fly. Don't go in the light room fixing hairs. What they see is what they get. And um, you're getting through those, and then you're sending them to the print queue, and off the photos go. That's how it's supposed to work. But if you're trying to fix a slug inside of your printer because maybe you don't have a backup, you're going to be in trouble because here's what's going to happen. Um, multiply that 40 times another 40. And now you've got 80 images that you got to run through. And not very many people can edit 80 images pretty quickly. So that becomes a problem. Now, in the second half hour, the traffic volume tends to go up. And I'm going to say it almost doubles. So... That 40 then turns to 80. Now you have 120 images because in that first half hour, people are warming up to it. And then in that next uh, half hour, and this is at a major corporate event, there are, the traffic doubles. So now you got 120. So if you're behind, you're not printing any images. You are behind 120 images. And then you've got to go through a print batch, uh, which means you got to print those 120 and stuff them. 
you are now down about a half hour just on the first half hour so it as you can see it turns into a disaster from there and it happens to the best of us you know when, uh, and as i was mentioning i was telling my story um i caught a slug and um i literally had in the first half hour this is during christmas too so they're just the traffic is super heavy in that first half hour and i had to run out to the car and pull the backup out and um or to the truck and plug it in and get it going and because i've got the experience that i have i was able to get the slug out of the first printer and um while printing on the second printer and basically meet the uh the print demand now i'm going to tell you that only comes with experience and time because people are breathing down your neck about the photos matter of fact they may even be standing over your shoulder is did my photo come out i took my photo ha half an hour ago it could be very frustrating and this is where this is where pos makes or breaks a photographer um to the point where there's like i just don't want to do it anymore and because people are going to come up to you and ask for their photos people love it now here's the here's the catch you guys i don't print four by sixes I don't, I don't do it. I don't offer that as a service. Only five by seven and bigger. Five by seven, six by eight. That's all I'm gonna print. And the reason for it is be, when you print four by sixes with a machine like that, you're in competition now with the photo booth. And the only way that's, the only thing that's gonna dif differentiate you from the photo booth is if you have what we call a production backdrop. So there's a, pro a company that designed a backdrop, you put your lights in and you're shooting off that backdrop because now it's extraordinary and then you offer four by six, well, that's, a different sh that's a different type of story. I don't do the fluffy boas and all that. We do custom backdrops. Typically um, the companies that I work for will order a backdrop or what we call a step and repeat and um, that's what we're photographing off of so that those that's my client base and that's how i rock with it so i want you to know that there's a huge difference and five by sevens when you hand someone a five by seven it's big it's in their face um it's bigness so that's how i operate with um in a nutshell with my print on site i typically work for large corporations and the print on site crews like uh, I'm doing one and this is so this will air on Friday um, on Saturday night I'll be doing one of the biggest jobs that I do of the year and um, we have a 10 man crew sometimes it's me by myself there's a lot of ways that you can use print on site it's not necessarily uh, you don't necessarily have to have a backdrop per se uh, you could offered as let's say you do large group photos for instance let's say you do large group photos and uh, they want you to take a, a large group photo one of the services you could offer right away is hey i can print that and you can pass it out as a as a keepsake to your your guest especially if you're working a conference i love those because it's an instant couple thousand dollars easy companies have money to, to pay for it they do and if you can get the folders imprinted, oh man, money all day. So keep that in mind as you as you as you uh, think about print on site and what it really means. Also, wedding photographers, I do it for wedding photographers as well. They want key shots and they want them printed at the at the venue to, pa to pass out to their guests. Um, I'll do those. All you know. Also, I work with local photographers. I will let them know. Uh, it, there's so much you can do with with your printer it, it's ridiculous and now DMP has a machine that allows you to do passport photos and it'll basically frame it up for you so if you if you have a local studio and you just want to make some fast money on your passport photos you can do that as well not everybody wants to go to the post office and get their passport photo sometimes they don't feel comfortable around um, you know, or they just don't feel comfortable going to the post office taking a photograph. I mean, that, that alone just sounds uh, trippy. Yeah, I took my photo at the post office because, you know, normally we see po photos in the post office. Uh, it's not a good thing. So um, but you can do that. But if you're looking to just uh, create 
a, an extra revenue stream, passport photos might be the might be the ticket if you're in that market. So um, that's the the 411 on print on site, and, and that's as detailed as I'm going to get uh, in terms of what you can do. There's an article on Rangefinder. If you go to Rangefinder's website and you type in Keith B. Dixon print on site, there's an article there that you can review. And I'll put the link in the show notes so that you guys can access that as well. Now, let me go to this other point, which I think is crucial. Lighting. Your lighting has got to be phenomenal. You have to be able to light on location accurately. And I'm going to tell you, it's really simple. If you if, if you go to Range Finder, you'll see the setup that I use. Two 60-inch umbrellas. And um, it kind of depends on the ceiling height as well. So if I got high ceilings, I'm using 60s. If I got low ceilings, I'm using 40s. 40-inch diameter umbrellas. Nothing more. Matter of fact, I, I'm going to go out on a limb because I got to... Uh, we're going to do a little chastising. If I see a photographer using a soft box with a print on site, unless it's a photo booth, I mean, for me, it just signals they don't know what they're doing. Because that soft box is just going to be a disaster, you know, as far as, the, I mean, if you got to push light out, you know, in order for that to work. And it, it does, it's not going to work effectively with um, a group of people in a row of people because the light is going to hit the first person and stop and then it's going to cast a shadow. So not a good idea. Umbrellas, people, please. I've been doing this for a little while. Take my word for it. Use umbrellas. It's better, especially if people are wearing glasses. You can get them up high. You can eliminate shadows. That's the reason for it. Now here's the second. Here's the second tip. 45 degree angles. 45 degree angles all day you don't need to do it overhead you can you can put it directly overhead if you're maybe doing a um a small like portrait two-person uh backdrop you can use one overhead but for the most part two 45s two uh lights at 45 degrees 40 inch umbrellas and then the other thing that you can do and um this is uh this is something you really got to kind of think through the lights that you use, the lights that I use, are 750 watt second strobes, and they're. The, I don't know if you guys remember Calumet. They went out of business. Um, I bought a whole bunch of Calumet lights, and that's what I use for just event photography because they're durable. Um, they've been known to fall. I, I know. Uh, I knew this guy who owned some travel lights, and he would use them outside, and they. He had a couple fall. They'd still work. I mean, just a rugged light. So I use all 750s with umbrellas. And the reason for that is I just get great light at 700 with the 750 watt second lights. Now, let me let me uh, contrast what I'm about to say. The, some of the photographers I work with, they use 500 watt second lights. I wouldn't go lower than that um, to do like Santa Claus pictures and other types of things, Easter pictures that we do, whatever. Um, those work. But I noticed that uh, they have more increased shadows. And when I say 500 watt seconds, these photographers are using Pro Photo 500 watt second lights, two of them, and they'll catch shadows. Typically, what I do is, um, as if I'm working as the tech, I'll go in and basically lift the shadows out, create a, a, a preset, and then pop it on all the photos. It's a little extra work, but not that bad for the, the money I'm making for my print on site. Um, so I don't mind doing it. Plus, it makes the photos look good. That's the main objective is to get the photos coming off the printer looking good. So if you got heavy shadows, guess what? The printer's going to print heavy shadows. Um, if you if you got a well exposed photograph, the printer's going to print a well exposed photograph. I believe in DMP so much, you guys. I used to have the DS40, uh, I think it was. Um, it was a big printer. And by the way, DMP's printers are generally in every kiosk, in every mall across the United States. That's how good they are. And they, they, they make this printer called the DS40. It's, a, it's heavy. Um, it's a great printer. And let me tell you what I did. Um, one time, uh, I think this was about two or three years ago, I actually printed up a bunch of my landscape photos and framed them and then did an art gallery showing, a five by seven showing of those images. And people walked in, they looked at the images and were like, whoa, 
you know, and, and I didn't tell them it was die sub. I just like, oh, okay, yeah, they were printed. But that's how good the quality is. That's how good I want you to know that the quality of the photo is. So if you're pushing out good images, DMP is definitely uh, one of the best printers. They, they are the best printer on the market, hands down. All right. Um, as far as software goes, um, let me tell you, if you're tethering, because I, I've, I've heard all the stories from uh, somebody write me a custom tethering program to uh, dark room on down to light room. The best program on the market right now, uh, multi-purpose, is Darkroom, hands down. Nothing out there is better than Darkroom on the Windows platform. So you gotta buy the pro version, because what you what it'll allow you to do is uh, basically imprint the photo, it'll line it up for you, it batches, um, it creates all the hot folders, I mean it just does everything. But they only make it for Windows. And uh, when I talk to the owners of the company, because uh, I guess the, there's licensing issues and things. Um, I don't think it's ever going to get done for Mac. Um, not, if it did, I'd be all over it. But I don't think it's going to get done for Mac. And I've tried Parallels and um, Windows, and I've just had. I, I, it was always like introducing more problems into my uh, workflow. So I'm a Mac, a Mac person. I use Mac, and all of my techs use Mac now. And that's how we, we roll. And Lightroom, that's it. Lightroom does a great job. It's fast. It's matter of fact, CC is even faster. But to be honest with you guys, I'm using Lightroom 5 on one of the, because the, I got a, about three or four different systems that I use on site. Um, we use Lightroom 5 like literally gets the job done because all you need to do is see a JPEG file. Matter of fact, we, we print raw files. <laughs> We're transferring raw files off the camera. I know it sounds ridiculous, but uh, I'm just, if you're listening to this podcast, that's a tip. We transfer raw files on cards, no tethered, none of that kind of stuff. We hand cards back and forth on raw files. Um, and we don't miss a beat. I, I kid you not. So, um, why you might be asking yourself Keith why I'm not a firm believer in the technology just yet and with that that raw files everything everything is there you know with that raw file when you get those JPEGs funny things happen so um, I'm a firm believer in passing cards with raw files I get the best print that's how we rock so um, if you're thinking or if someone's told you that you know you shouldn't um, I'm going to say you shouldn't, if you don't have the proper gear, then you keep a JPEG all day. Um, if, if your lighting is shaky, um, you know, and, and you, you got JPEG, you might run into some issues, you know, if you need to make corrections. So you definitely got to have your light game on period, no matter what. But, um, if you don't have the proper equipment, then JPEG, if you're going to tether, you must use JPEG. That's the only way you can. You, you're going to kill yourself and your operation if you send that raw um, file through tethered um, because there's there's just too many of them. So um, that's my uh, take on hardware and software. Now um, and also image transfer. So uh, image transfer again. Uh, if you're going to tether, just keep a JPEG. And if you're using Lightroom tethered, here's another, I'm going to throw in, I'm throwing in these little nugget tips. If you're using Lightroom, the thing that I would do is, um, I would do it for a smaller event where, um, there's not a lot of people because the minute you hit the, the button, it loads the file and it, it, that becomes the priority it loading that file into whatever folder you're dropping it. So if whoever your tech is, if you're tethered up to the camera and you uh, take the picture, it's going to drop. It's going to interrupt whatever they're doing and drop the, the file in. That's a little disastrous. I don't do that. But if I'm working by myself, I'll do it if I need to. And also there's a cam ranger option, which I think works a lot better. Uh, you create a hot folder and then drop it in with the cam ranger. You can research that on DMP's website. They have right. a, a matter of fact, DMP Thank you for listening. I appreciate you guys. 
And if you're a subscriber, thank you very much. If you're going to subscribe, let me thank you in advance. I appreciate you. I love it when when I get those alerts that someone subscribed to this broadcast podcast. And I'm looking forward to doing some really good content this year. So uh, every Friday, you guys, every Friday is the date, uh, 7.30 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Every Friday, I'm dropping a new podcast. Thank you. I'll talk to you soon. Peace.